my name's Pri, Pri Silva. I'm one of the um, ENT head and neck surgeons based in Oxford. Um, so the first question people often ask is, what is, you know, what does a facial weakness actually feel like? I guess the way to answer this is really to think about what it does. Your, your facial nerve has lots of functions, including your ability to close your eyes, your ability to close your mouth when you're eating and drinking, um, obviously the cosmetic side of things in terms of your appearance, your ability to smile. Um, so if there is um, a weakness of your facial nerve, then it impacts on all of those functions. So it can result in difficulty closing your eyes, so, um, which can result in discomfort in your eye. Um, when you're eating and drinking, you can get dribbling. Uh, and obviously it's something which is which is noticeable to other people and also to yourself as well. And sometimes your face can feel quite heavy as a result of that on the one side. In terms of how long a facial paralysis lasts, it really depends on the cause. Um, so if it's part of a more global cause, for example, as a, a part of a stroke, then obviously it will depend on the recovery of the stroke and the extent of the stroke. If it's uh, a cause such as a viral cause, then it can take a number of months for things to completely get back to normal. Um, and to some extent that can be um, that can be sped up by the use of things like steroids. But again, it's very much dependent on the cause itself. Um, and then obviously if it's something uh, where it's part of a more chronic problem, such as a growth on the nerve itself, then that might be something that doesn't completely recover. Stress in itself doesn't really cause a facial paralysis. Uh, obviously stress can affect your overall health and that might contribute to problems, but it's not, uh, in isolation in itself, it's not usually a cause of, of a facial weakness. So there are, there are several reasons as to why someone might um, develop a facial weakness and it can be part of a more global problem, for example, a stroke. Um, however, the causes which, where the facial nerve is affected by itself can include things like viral causes. So you may have heard of um, conditions like Bell's palsy and Ramsey-Hunt syndrome. So these are, these are viral causes which, attempt, which affect the nerve. Um, and less commonly, a facial paralysis can be a result of a growth or tumour on the nerve itself or something which is pressing the nerve um, as it comes out of, of, the, of the brain and supplies the face. So in terms of uh, the treatment, again, it's, uh, it's very much dependent on the cause. Um, and, and there's two aspects to the, the treatment. One, it's important to treat the effects of the facial paralysis. So for example, if you're not able to close your eye, it's important to address that, um, but then on top of that, it's important to treat the underlying cause or address the underlying cause and find out what it is. Uh, and often that might involve a group of people. So it may involve an ENT specialist, it may involve a plastic surgeon, an eye specialist, and even a physiotherapist, so often within a sort of multidisciplinary setting. And that in itself gives the individual the best chance of uh, outcomes in terms of recovery of the nerve and making sure that they receive the appropriate support and input that they need.